term. Yeah, in short term, or what you would say is an unfamiliar scenario, what will happen is there's a few guys who do incredibly well with women and then a lot that don't. So the trick is to get women from an unfamiliar scenario into a... So the first time I had, it might have been with Fresh and Fit, Fresh was like, no, you don't get it. The dating world is way different than when you were dating yes. 10 years ago. Yeah. And I was like, bro, like, just take care of yourself. You know, as Andrew Tate would say, just be a top G, dude. Just yeah. like, I don't understand. It's not hard, man. Like, just get fit, do your stuff, like, become charismatic, like, serve. There's a lot of ways to become great. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, nah, dude, it ain't that. Think about it. And so, like, they started to explain all these reasons why the dating world is so different today and social media and all this stuff. And I was like, okay, that kind of makes sense and then they started talking about you know like everyone waiting to get married now and now like there's just this weird dynamic with women not being able to find men later on in their careers and mm. i was like man these are actually legitimate problems that i'm seeing the average age of first marriage i believe has moved up to 30 years old for women I believe that is the case. James Sexton, the divorce attorney, he's been updating us on like some of these divorce statistics. What was it before, if it's 30 now? <laughs> In the 1950s, it was probably 22, 23, and now it's 30. It consistently moves up later and later because women don't need men. I mean, it's not a criticism. It's just the truth. Like legitimately, you can buy a Glock and make $300,000 a year as a woman and replace those things that a husband would have given <laughs> you in, in 1950. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, but like the thing is that that is disproportional. Like there's a bunch of things as far as procurement, providing, protecting that women legitimately don't they need, it need back men. Then, and they didn't they have still, the opportunity to have. But they still want men. And when they look for the men they want, they're looking for Jason Momoa and Chris Hemsworth. And that's <laughs> That's what's unfortunately happening yeah. is that they're being inundated with images on social media. It's, uh, it's a combination of being inundated with images of men that are ex exceedingly good looking or wealthy on social media combined with on dating apps, them having the ability to left swipe thousands of men. And but don't men have the same problem with porn and all these other yes, things? So porn is the analogy, but the difference is this. With porn this is a complete and total fantasy that is screwing up their dopamine. Yes. And so not only that's a huge problem. Yeah, men. So not only are they not getting good with women, they're actually getting worse. Like they're going to have erectile dysfunction or whatever when they get into actual sexual situations, and they're going to see. There's the studies that show is if you continually show men uh, non-contextualized pictures of attractive women, they start to see their partner is less and less attractive. Yep. That's yep. very dangerous when you consider makes men delusional. Super big problem, and the reason why so pervasive is because men often most of the time look for their validation through sex through sex women look through their validation through attention and so because of that you'll see women will do six thousand left swipes for every one date they go on on dating apps they're not going on dating apps to go on dates they're going on dating apps for validation and it's causing this massive mismatch 80 percent of men on dating apps are deemed to be below average attractiveness by women 20 percent are deemed to be attractive and four and a half percent of men are deemed to be so attractive that women will actually pursue them and those four and a half percent of men are getting outrageous numbers of options with women i have some friends of mine that are like this they have hundreds of of, of matches and then i have most of my guy friends they get none they so it's, the, it's a situation of winner take all yes it, it but but because of social media do you remember you had these mom and pop stores that existed before amazon that yep. amazon all closed out because what happens is amazon's um what's it what's the word vertical integration amazon's supply chain was so powerful that it outdid every mom and pop store amazon was able to get something to you the same day that the mom and pop uh, store was not able to compete with and, and it, on price well and you know like for me, as I've studied business more and like yeah. been in it longer, I've realized that tech especially is winner take all. Yes. And people don't realize this. This is why these VC companies pump so much money and will lose. You're, yeah, you're not on 50 different social media apps. You're on four, yep. maybe five. It's winner take exactly. all with everything because, you know, that was like, I, you know, I was reading the battle of Uber and Lyft and it was an interesting thing of like Uber's burning a billion dollars like a month or something crazy to just get market share. Yes. And people are like, this is crazy, but it's like, no, it's true because everyone else is gonna see how big this market is and you have a window to take it all. Because yes. there's there's no like, everyone's gonna use 10 different rideshare apps. Yes. It's not gonna happen. It's winner take all. And tech is interesting like that. So it's interesting how business people can see, can, can completely can understand this concept of Amazon stepping in and then using their massive economies of scale, their it, vertical integration and their supply chain in order to put all these small mom and pop 
pl places out of business. So the globalization of your commerce made it so that you just don't even go to the grocery. I don't even go to the grocery store anymore. I'll just no. get stuff off Amazon I've Fresh. Been in so long, and I don't feel guilty at all about it. Last, I've not thought about all the businesses that got t put out because of this, right? And all the businesses they bought, including Zappos and and Diapers.com and all these other things that Amazon bought. We understand that the globalization of e-commerce causes all to go to. Uh, Amazon. Yep. We understand that, but we don't seem to understand that concept when it comes to dating. We don't seem to understand that social media made it so that a small group of men had massive options with women and a large group of men didn't. So when we look at the but data- But do you think it, the inverse is true with women? What do you mean? Like the, the women are the same, like the, the top, top women have all these men coming after them? Well, no, all, most women have all these men coming after them. Well, if you, well, like women will get thousands of average looking women. If you saw some of the women that I know, they get paid $2,000 to go have dinner with men and they don't even have sex with them. And these women are, no offense, they're mid, they're not super attractive. Men are <laughs> desperate. So wait, basically what's men happened- are desperate. Men, was, so what's happened is, and this is where the confusion comes, there's a short-term dating market and a long-term dating market. Yeah, okay. In the short-term dating market, about a third of men don't get to participate. They're just not tall enough enough, good looking enough, whatever, they're not established. Maybe later on in life, like I certainly wasn't part of this group in my early 20s and I could be in it now, but I'm in a relationship. That that like bottom third you, of men. You're, you think you're part of the bottom third who doesn't get to participate. In the 20, when I was 22, I was. Yeah, and when I, when I was younger, I was horribly made fun of. Like I was had tiny little arms and I was just a weirdo. Like I knew there was a lot of things I didn't understand. Now I'm 46 years old, I think now I could. You don't think you could have got one of the weirdo women? But that it's not. In a short in a short term context, it would have been harder. Yeah. In a long term context, things even out. So what you'll the, see the, is the weird women will end up with the weird men. Yeah, correct. In a long term context, it evens out a little bit more. You know, you said a third of men are just like there's short term, there's long term. Yeah, in short term, or what you would say is an unfamiliar scenario. There's a eight. The, the, what'll happen is there's a few guys who do incredibly well with women, and then a lot that don't. So the trick is to get women from an unfamiliar scenario into a, a familiar scenario. In which case, now you can let her know that you're funny. You can let her know that you have social alignments. You can let her know that you're charismatic. She can see that you have a deep voice. She can actually look at your autonomic responses. Like, do, like when you talk to a really beautiful woman, do your eyes get big? Does your voice go up an octave? Do your palms start sweating? Do you become very fidgety? If you do these things, she can tell, okay, I'm probably the hottest girl he's ever seen or the hottest girl he could ever be with. That's why he's acting nervous. And then if you're a guy, if, you, if you've seen a guy who's been with like lots of women, when he goes up and talks to a pretty girl, he never looks at her boobs. He's like, yeah, what up? He might call her bro and give her a fist bump. Like it's, he's totally unaffected by her physical attractiveness. And then women find him more attractive. So that's one of the, the cues that happens. And in the short term dating market, what happens is a lot of these guys, they don't do that. They're at the bottom. They don't have any social calibration whatsoever. Obviously autism is far more more pervasive in men than it is in women. And so because of that, you just see a, a, this like bottom third of men that cannot be charismatic. They cannot be funny. They're just not tall enough. They just don't have the facial symmetry. They're just not handsome. For those guys, they're having a hard time. The problem is there's a new study that came out with the GSS. I'm sure you'll like this. Where, women, where do you get all these studies? <laughs> huh? All I do is read. I, I read probably 40, 50 books a year. And then Rollo and I are constantly sending each other stats. Okay. And the other thing is there's people who don't like us who try to do counter stats. Fact so we checks. have to we have to fact check oh, their fact check. Because you're debating so much, you yeah. have to like be prepped. Like honestly, uh if you wanna if you're a physicist, if you're watching this right now and you're a physicist and you think you're good at explaining physics, debate a flat earther. If you do it, I promise anyone who studies physics right now, if you debated a flat earther, or like a real, like I'm talking like Witsit or Flat Earth Dave, like the guys who do it all the time, they will, I'll bet you any amount of money, they will destroy you. Are you e a flat earther? No, of course not. <laughs> of course not, okay. <laughs> and my point is they will just, even though they're completely wrong, yeah. they're completely wrong about everything they're do, saying. Do they believe that they're right? Yeah, they absolutely believe they're right. And they use the Bible in order, they talk about the firmament in the book of Genesis yep, in yep. order to describe what, what we're basically in like a, um, a fishbowl, like it's it's ridiculous. But the point is, if you're a, if you, we, I've done this. I've had physicists going up against flat earthers, and the physicists get destroyed. If you you need to practice in order to express your viewpoint in a bulletproof manner. Yeah. And so what I'll do is find people who disagree with me. One of the things I wanted to do, or really like brush up on my physics knowledge, is I started debating these flat earthers, and it's hard as. I got to do 20, 30 hours of study because I have to debunk all their nonsense like, about Van Allen belts. How is this idiot beating me? I don't understand huh? how I can. You're like, how is this idiot beating me? Like, yeah. No, it's one of the, the first, well, I, I, I don't think I've ever lost a flat earth debate. Most people will say I've, there's two, there's two I've done where people were like really surprised. Like I've, I've convinced people in the opposite direction. But when I see normal people go up against flat earthers, they get destroyed. Well, it's the same kind of situation where it's like, I want to, uh, I want to be able to explain my theories on evolutionary psychology. And if I believe these things, then I need to be a, go up against people who don't 
agree with me. Yeah. And when I go up against them, I need to debunk every single one of their beliefs. Yeah. And usually it's easy to do that now because you can go on TikTok and every one of their beliefs is in a 90 second clip <laughs> and you can just go research it. It's very, yeah. it's actually okay. much easier. These are their top 10 beliefs. Exactly. 